it's Dr. Rick. Hope that you guys are having a good week. Uh, we're in the middle of the week. Normally, uh, this would be a uh, time that I would actually be spent on business responsibilities, business tasks at this point in time in the morning. It's uh, still early in the morning as I record this. I'm not shooting it live. Uh, but uh, and normally I kind of did deal with the community stuff either as I'm riding and driving or in the afternoon. But uh, something I'm immensely passionate about uh, has tapped my shoulder once again far too often, far too frequently. It is happening and it definitely needs to be addressed. And I am uh, as flabbergasted and perturbed about it as a person possibly can be because I'm watching it over and over again and I see it and I understand the dynamic and yet we don't give it the attention that is necessary and that is intimate partner violence, intimate partner homicide within the black community. Is it an issue in other communities? Yes. I can't be responsible for what's going on in other communities when there is such uh, devastation and destruction taking place in my community. Uh, I am black. I am unapologetically black. I have no enemies except the pe the enemies of my people. Uh, so the thing is this. Here in Houston, a 38-year-old mother, uh, Jamaica Williams, wet rest rest easy, uh, young lady rest easy. Uh, her on again, off again boyfriend since high school, uh, who she has two kids with, killed her in front of three of her children. She has four. Killed her in front of three of her children because he was upset and jealous that she was getting dressed to go out with some of her friends. Um, at the time, from what I understand, they weren't even together, but obviously he has access because of the kids. Uh, and this on and off again thing creates this access dynamic, which isn't healthy anyway. But again, when you have kids, you don't want to limit access to the kids unless it's absolutely necessary. And one might argue when someone is capable of doing this kind of violence, it might have been warranted. Uh, but here we are. My thing is, I've been talking about uh, African-American adolescent and young adult male violence uh, for more than uh, a decade and a half now, seriously and significantly, because uh, it isn't being uh, properly and effectively addressed. Uh, out of my research and the things that I've done, I created um, the Black Man Lead Rite of Passage Initiative, which initially started out solely as a rite of passage, a means by which to properly and effectively racially socialize young black males, which has been proven to reduce their proclivity for uh, violence towards one another and others. And it is also now proven to reduce uh, incarceration, reduce recidivism, uh, increase um, the capacity to develop skills that will allow them to be uh, providers and uh, contributors to the community and so much more. Uh, but when you don't have this element in place, when there is no proper racial socialization, when likely there is the absence of proper manhood being modeled consistent, consistently in their environment, the chances are they're going to grow up and not understand how to manage their capacity for violence. Males are naturally designed to be, uh, to possess the capacity for violence and destruction. It, it is because we are designed to be the protectors of our tribes, our villages, our communities, our homes, our families, our women and our children. And when we are not properly socialized into our responsibility as men, when we're not properly socialized into what is expected of us and to be given a sense of identity of what we are and who we are in our communities, at around 14 and sometimes earlier, we start to reach this point to where there's no answers to the natural internal yearnings and inquiries of who am I? 
What place do I have in this world? How do I exercise my power? Do, uh, where 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 do, where does my power lie? What does my influence lie? That's a natural yearning inside of a man to be. And if he cannot be, he starts to tear up stuff. He starts to become destructive. He uh, tends to emote more than men should. It doesn't mean that we don't have emotions. It means that we don't normally Dyna dynamically express our emotions we tend to operate from reason this is what makes us good leaders is that we don't make impulsive decisions and that when you see men consistently operating from a place of impulsive thrust it is because they have not properly been acclimated and socialized into manhood what we have to understand is we are in a situation where we have been dumbed down, misdirected, misguided uh, through the media to focus on the things that actually have no intrinsic value as it pertains to what we can do to grow, to become more powerful, to become more connected, to unify, to literally experience in real time this talk of liberation and empowerment that is so perpetual but non-existent the talk is perpetual the reality is non-existent because we focus on the wrong thing we've spent three weeks talking about first dates in cheesecake factory and anytime a situation like this is brought up it's looked at for a minute you get the oh my god what a monster what a dog what a asshole trifling and all the stuff about the man and bless her heart, rest in peace, and then it's done and it's over with. And what we don't understand is our sons are literally killing our daughters, and it's on a significant enough level that it is uh, perpetuating devastation within our community. It is creating a larger and ever-widening cavern of distrust between our women and men. Um, and we're not approaching the discussion in a way to sit up and say, okay, why is this happening? What do we need to do? See, there are uh, dynamic consequences for every action. Cause and uh, effect are always in play. When you sit up and you see situations that you're not happy with in your community, there's a cause for it. There's something that's not being done or something that is being done that is at the core of it. And if you want to change it, you have to go to the source. You have to go to the very cause and say this needs to change and be willing to invest and put in the time and the effort and the energy and the focus to change it. I've been telling you guys for nearly 20 years about the need to properly racially socialize young black males, the, about the need to fill the gap of the 1.5 million men that are missing in the black community. Because when we don't do that, we end up with young black males who don't know who they are. Young black males who will naturally have a biological thrust to belong, a natural neurobiological need to have the ability to express themselves in a world where they, as black males, have the least opportunity to do so. That's frustration in and of itself. And if you don't teach them how to manage that frustration, they will take it out on whatever they can take it out on. When the only time they can sit up and have a sense of identity many times is because of the peace or the dime piece, or the pretty girl, or the bright-minded girl, or the uh, uh, ride-or-die girl that they think they have that's on their side, is their identity. The moment that it doesn't work and she begins to remove herself, he, begin, he begins to lose himself. And the feeling and the fear and the anger and the frustration and all the things that come to the top all of a sudden turns him to her worst enemy and her greatest threat. Because why? He doesn't know who he is. See, a man has to enter into a situation with a woman knowing who he is. Because if he knows who he is, he's never shaken by her absence if it should happen for whatever reason. But also, he knows how to care for her, how to love her, how to be what she needs him to be. 
And this and, and, and please don't get on here talking about well, what about the women? The women need the same thing. They need to be socialized, they need to be taught, they need to be brought up. There's a lot of things lacking in there, but this is not this is about protecting the lives and the sanctity and the security of our women, which is the responsibility of the men. One thing that we're going to have to do in the black community is stop pointing the finger. See, the one thing that my grandfather taught me as my adopted father. God rest his soul, is it starts with you, son. Well, he used to say, son, sometimes, but he would also say, starts with you, boy. He said, a lot of stuff in your life is going to happen. And you can look around and for all the people to blame, but 99% of the time it's something that you did. If you didn't do it to yourself directly, you allow things to happen, to allow things to come into play. He says, your responsibility is to be a person that's responsible for you and everybody else that's in your circle that you are supposed to be covering. There are no excuses, boy. There are no reasons for you not to do it. When you find that you're not doing it, and you will because you're not perfect, you don't point the finger. You stand up, you square your shoulders and say, I'm going to be better tomorrow. And see, we don't want to talk about what's wrong with us because we're so busy trying to prove our validity and our worth, the acknowledgement of our imperfections, the acknowledgement of our fallacy is almost like saying I'm not. And see, it isn't. I am who I am. I'm that person. And I don't ever have to question that because I know, but I also know there's room for me to grow. And I know that I can be better. I can be more influential. I can be more powerful. I can be more effective. And so instead of sitting up and pointing out everything everyone is doing wrong, to me, or I just simply become better. And that's the thing we have to teach our young black boys because they're going to go out into a world that's inherently hostile to them. They're going to go out in the world as the person with the biggest target on their back in society, bar none. Because everybody knows we can give the women fluidity and action because without the protection and the leadership and the guidance of the men, they will only get so far and they will still be within our control. We're still dealing with a Eurocentric patriarchy that we need our black men to be on that game. Now, every time I see this, it bothers me because of how little attention it gets. We will jump on clown stuff with the quickness and we'll see memes for days about cheesecake factories and where and where not to take a person on the first date. We'll see all this stuff, but what we won't see is questions on what we need to do to protect our women. What we will not see is what do we do to better prepare young black males to be black men. See, you have to build strong black men. It was Frederick Douglass who said that um, it is better and easier to build strong men than it is to repair broken ones and what happens is you've got all this brokenness that nobody wants to talk about nobody wants to deal with nobody and i've been talking about it i've been writing about it i've put it in books i've done lectures i've created programs and the thing is it's hard to get people to listen it's hard to get people to sit up and understand the gravity of the moment. We'll sit up and we'll complain, but we don't want to understand the dynamic behind it because if I gain too much of an understanding, then it's going to demand that I take action. See, I don't. I, I want the win, but I don't want the process. I want the elevation, but I don't want the process. I want something of power, but I don't want the process. And because I don't want the process, I'm never going to pursue anything or get too engaged in anything that's going to demand that I participate in the process. Let me tell you something. There's no promise, no prize without the process. Process always precedes the promise. We're never going to get black unity. We're never going to restore the black family. We're never going to really truly experience liberation and freedom and power until we are ready to pursue and systematically engage in processes that produce prizes, promises, and power. <laughs> It can't.
can't be acceptable. First and foremost, black men, it can't be acceptable for our young black males to be taking the lives of our young black women. They are the future. You can't sit up and say the children of the future and as they begin to age and grow, be okay with them being uh, eradicated and slaughtered by our own, by anyone, but definitely not by our own. Um, anybody who has followed me knows that I've, go, go, I've gone all in hard in the paint on uh, the killing of black males and females by police officers. I have entered into heavy, intense engagement with law enforcement to develop solutions and to fight on behalf of my people. And it's highly contentious because you're talking about people that don't want to admit that anything is wrong. But I understand that I can't fight just on one side. I have to sit up and be very clear on what I see and provide the data and statistics. People are listening on both sides, but that's a slow process because there's a power mechanism behind it. But what I can tell you is, yes, we need to make sure they stop killing our people. But that what, what white cops are doing is a fraction of what we're doing to ourselves. It's a fraction of what we're doing. We are destroying ourselves from within. And it's from frustration. It's from fear. It's from hurt. It's from a lack of self-awareness, self-esteem, self-confidence, broken and marred self-images and self-concept. We have issues that we are not addressing. We've got generation after generation of trauma that has been stacked. It is no longer post-traumatic stress disorder or post-traumatic slave syndrome. It is now complex trauma, meaning that we are stacking trauma on top of trauma. It is not one traumatic event. It is consistently living life in a state of trauma. And if you think I'm playing, the vast majority of our people are living life at or below the poverty line. Every day I wake up and I'm stressed about how the bills are going to get paid. I'm stressed about how I'm going to get my child what they need to be effective in school and be better. And how am I going to keep a roof over my head? Will I still have a job tomorrow? When you're waking up with that type of stress, you are now in a state of microaggression and micro trauma that as it adds up will eventually reach the same force and level as if you would have been shot at, you would have been hit by a car or any other highly traumatic event is just happening slowly and progressively and we have a large percentage of our people growing up in that and we're expecting out of that to gain productive effective and efficient uh results from these children growing up in this i've told you over and over again i've written about it i've done uh symposiums i've done workshops i've got a symposium coming uh, in January. Uh, we couldn't get it done this year because of some date issues, so it's been moved to January 27th. But it's coming. Uh, it's going to be part two of what we did in February of this year. And then we're going to follow up with actually in community advocacy and resources. But what I'm telling you is we have a problem because we are not addressing the issues. We are not looking at the, 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 the larger scope and we are simply trained to complain. Complaining in its very very nature is a sign of hopelessness. It is basically saying, I don't see any hope. So all I have left is to complain. See, people who have hope, people who believe that they can change something, they don't spend time complaining. They spend time invested in making changes. You don't get any traction from complaining. All you do is make a sound out that you feel helpless, a sound out that you have no hope. And what you do is you send a signal to those who want and, and benefit from your demise that they have you where they want you. So they simply tighten the screws and apply more pressure. The goal is to crush you. And if you don't sit up and understand that when we have our boys killing our girls, we are being crushed. When we have an abandonment of our responsibilities, when men are abdicating our roles for the sake of something outside of the scope of black empowerment, 
we are being crushed. When women can only see black men as a commodity, we are being crushed. When our children are growing up in homes where there's animosity, neglect, anger, and violence, we are being crushed. When we are dependent upon our enemy to educate our children, we are being crushed. My prayers go out to the family of Jamaica Williams. Uh, from what I understand, um, in the story that I read and the uh, reports that I watched on the news, her oldest son is 18. This is his senior year. She has been striving to get this young man to this point. He's an honor roll student. Um, this is supposed to be a crowning moment for him to make his mom proud of for all the things she's got. And I can imagine she's like most of our sisters. She isn't perfect, but she's trying to hold it together. She has all of her kids with her. It's not an ideal situation, but she's working with what she has. And she's putting these kids through school. And she's so proud of this kid. And then this happens. Now, he was the only one that wasn't there when it happened. And now he's got to go through his senior year without his ace. And if he's 18, she was 20 when she had him. So they grew up together. And so I can imagine he's lost. And I'm going to do everything I can to be available to the family um, for the sake of grief counseling and guidance in that way. Um, but... My thing is, what scares me is the families uh, speaking out and talking about what went down. Uh, for whatever reason, police are being very quiet. They haven't even released the name of the guy. Uh, I'm pretty sure the people who know her know who it is because it's the, the guy she's been with forever, on and off. But um, the family said that he had made threats to her in the past and they didn't take it seriously uh, because he was a part of the family uh, because they had known each other for so long and because they had children together the statistics doesn't support that train of thought the statistics show that between the ages of 15 and 44 if it's not natural causes it's intimate partner violence that's killing young black females. Natural causes, accidents and cars, uh, cancer, some type of physical illness, whatever. All that's natural causes. The second leading cause is the person that's supposed to love you, the person that's supposed to protect you. The person that's supposed to be the creator of your safe environment is the one that's killing you. That's a problem. And listen, uh, statistics show that, be aware, just being aware, that when there is this proclivity for violence within the home, the presence of a gun increases the chance of homicide by five times. So when there's a gun in the home of an abusive house, uh, the chance of a homicide taking place is five times higher. Uh, I am a gun person, so this isn't some gun control thing. I'm a gun person. Uh, but nobody's in my house has ever been harmed by a gun because I am the leader and the head in my house, and I am a protector. We, we don't. But that's the whole thing. If my grandfather never gave me nothing, he was definitely a provider. He worked his ass off. Uh, but the one thing he, he he did is he provided an environment to where when he was around, you, you had absolutely no fear. And that's been the goal is when you're with me, you're good. And that has to be the goal of every man, not because she's doing everything you wanted to do, not because she's jumping through hoops, not because she's doing all this stuff that, that people, think, but because it's my job to protect you. It's my job to make sure you're safe. And here's the thing. When we do that enough, when we create an environment, 
And when we respond to violence towards our women with violence, we will send a message out that our women are off limits. And what we will find is our women will automatically become more safe. But when no one's protecting, when we're the ones attacking, them, everybody feels they're fair game. It's time to send a message, not on my watch. And this is the thing that I want to get out of the head of our men. No, our women aren't perfect. But perfection isn't a requisite for our protection. It never has been. Because there's never been a perfect person, a per perfect woman or a perfect man. The requisite for our protection is she cannot protect herself the way we can. We're designed to protect. That's why we're bigger. That's why we're stronger. That's why we, with our testosterone, are more agitated and, ag and, 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 and edgy when things get hyped because we're literally designed to go to the next level in order to what? To protect, to defend, to set a parameter around those we are supposed to be protecting that says you don't want to go over there and mess with that. That comes with a price. Even if you get in there and you do something, it comes with a price. You don't want to pay that price. But all we doing is sitting around commenting, oh my God, shaking my head, that's horrible, what a monster, just playing out evil, does absolutely nothing. We've got to be willing to sit up and say, not on my watch. But ladies, this is for you. The first time he shows any sign that he's violent, towards you or potentially towards your kids or in the future you leave then because even then there's a chance that there could be retaliation but the longer you stay the more connected and attached he becomes the more he feels he has a right to have you there the more his identity is built on his ability to manage manipulate and control you and the moment you start to take that away the moment he feels threatened and he will strike it is built in and that's why it's also so important for us to create these programs that train our young boys build strong men building strong men is so important because a strong man understands hey look it didn't work out it hurts but it didn't work out I'm a good man I'll I'll find someone else. Or I made a mistake. I learned from my mistake. And I'll do better next time. But the idea that you hurt me so I'll kill you. Is a mindset. And it's not just happening to our women. It's the same idea of being disrespected. That's calling, causing them to kill one another. I've put the work out. I've put the research out. I've written about it. This, um, this violence is something that can be mitigated and minimized and marginalized by direct, consistent action in a specific area, primarily socializing these young black males before they get to the age where they're doing that. You can't leave them to themselves to raise themselves, to develop an idea of who they are for themselves and have it marred and then when they get with someone then think that they're all of a sudden going to pull it all together they're taking a marred idea of what their role is they're taking a marred idea of their manhood and their masculinity and they're going into a situation that is extremely delicate and fragile and they're tearing it to shreds because they don't know who they are it's our responsibility we failed in that area we failed cataclysmically in that area and it's showing up in the destruction and the burning down of the village in our communities and it's our responsibility to stop it it's our responsibility to put out the fire it's our responsibility to do something different 
Look, I had to talk about this. This was not how I planned on starting out my morning. Uh, it'll probably be a little later in it. I don't know. I might be able to get this up this morning. Uh, but I'm going to get it up. But hey, look, we've got work to do. There's some things we're going to have to do in order to change things. Again, if you believe in the work we do, look in the description box and click the link. Uh, and show and love and give, share, like, and all that good stuff. Thank you, I'm out. Yeah, yeah. They said I should give it up like that just ain't good enough. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. I'm free to be free.